I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my savior. God, you are the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. Lord, you are worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. The snares of the grave entangle me. The traps of death com confronted me. In my anguish, I called to you, Lord. I cried to you, God, for help. From your temple, you heard my voice. My cry came to your ears. They assailed me in the day of my misfortune, but you, Lord, were my support. 
You brought me forth into freedom. You saved me because you loved me. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voices of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them. But they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And I speak to you today in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you can see me smirking, it's because my kids are in the very back and we're hoping they're going to make it through to the end of this recording. Um, so bear with us, and uh, it's really good to be with you tonight. Many years ago, I was in a youth band. Um, now we're going back into the, into the mid-90s, and I was a tuba player, uh, and I was in this band called the Edmonton Youth, or sorry, the Etobicoke Youth Band, and I was in that band for, uh, for about five or six years. There were two conductors of the band, and both of them were individuals I came to know extremely well. Uh, they both became good friends, and they were very influential for me in my high school years. Uh, we would go to music camps in the summer, um, and went on band trips, and, and all the rest of it. So uh, both of them were great. I won't name them here, just in case you know we're, we're live now, and it's all across the internet. <laughs> anyway, uh, years later, um, I came back from university, and I went to one of the band concerts, and mostly 
I went so that I could see these two conductors who had meant so much to me and who I was just so excited to get a chance to see. And so after the concert was over, I waited um, and hung around at the back and they eventually came out. And so I went up to, um, went up to the one um, of the conductors and said, oh, it's so great to see you. I, I just am so happy to be here. And um, isn't it lovely to see you? And he looked at me um, and he couldn't remember my name. <sighs> And I remember being absolutely devastated. I think he, he sort of knew who I was, but had no, couldn't put a name to me um, and couldn't really quite place how many, how many years ago it was and, and the context or even the instrument that I played. Uh, I mean, fair enough. I can only imagine how many hundreds of students come through um, in, his, in his lifetime and in the work that he did in his high school as well as this band. But I remember feeling so devastated that he didn't remember me and that he didn't especially remember my name. And so I guess I always think of that story when I think of the story that we have tonight, the story about the shepherd and the sheep, um, the story that provides us with a window into who God is and how much God knows each one of us uh, as individuals by name and by person. Um, not just that I'm Sue, but I'm Sue who is X, Y, and Z, that I played the tuba um, and did a whole bunch of other things and still do. Uh, the intimate way in which God knows each one of us is quite an incredible and amazing part of what it means to be a follower of God through Jesus Christ, that intimate relationship and knowledge that God has of each one of us. And I know it to be true in my life, mostly through what I read in scripture, but also just an experience of God that says, yes, God knows my name. Um, and there's a, a warmth and a, and a delight and an amazement in God's knowledge of me. It says in Isaiah that God has carved our name in the palm of God's hand. Um, and there are images upon images of God as mother, as God as father, um, and this loving embrace. And here in Jesus, we hear this idea of a shepherd and a sheep. And that there's a whole bunch of shepherds uh, maybe running around and calling their sheep. And how do the sheep know which one to come to? Well, it's the sound of the whistle or the voice that the sheep recognize the shepherd and the shepherd knows each one by name. And so that, of course, leads us into an understanding of how do we recognize God and how do we recognize God's voice? And I think of the world around us um, that calls out to us from many places, whether it's a thief or a bandit um, or the demands on our time or the, the influences of so many different people and places and scenarios that peck away at us and call us, maybe even call us by name. I know Amazon is constantly sending me details about what they think I would like to buy um, because of what I've bought in the past. They would claim to know me by name and to know all the things that I like or dislike or when I've run out of dishwashing soap or toilet paper or whatever it is and when I'm going to need some more. They would claim to know me and yet of course they don't. Um, and yet, of course, they don't. What are those strange voices that we have calling us? My voices are going to be different than yours. Um, what are they for you? What are they for me this week? And am I able to filter out those voices to hear God's voice? How can I recognize God's voice in amongst all of the myriad of other voices that call at me? to recognize that this is the way I need to go, that this is the voice I want to and need to follow. How do we, how do we filter it? Part of it is in the quiet, which is, you know, for some of us, a really hard thing to find these days. And for other, others of us, there's so much of it that we're almost drowning in the silence. Um, part of it is in scripture. Uh, part of it is in asking God to reveal God's self and then being able to notice that voice in amongst all the others. And a lot of it is practice, um, like the scales of a piano, practicing um, the silence, practicing listening to God, um, practicing hearing and sort of testing out what that voice is for each one of us. God knows you, God knows me. And our task, our, our delight, I hope, is to listen for God's voice in amongst 
all of the others. And then to listen to the call to follow, whether that following is with a challenge to do something or whether the following is to lie down in a heap in the green pastures and to be terribly still for a while and just to soak in that rest. What is God calling you to right now? And so the first thing we hear in this passage is about our name and is it, it is about the voice. But then we also hear and see this image of a gate. Uh, many scholars feel like Jesus has got about three or four metaphors that he's juggling um, in this whole passage. And it's a little bit tricky to keep straight all of the metaphors. But I read this story this week about the gate. And man, has it stuck with me. So I want to share it with you and, uh, and see... Um, see what you think about it. It's a story about a Bible researcher who was spending some time in the Middle East. In amongst his travels, he ran across an Arab shepherd. This was an individual who no knew nothing about the New Testament. The shepherd was not a Christian and did not know that part of Scripture. But he was a keeper of sheep. And so this shepherd was showing off his flock to this man, as well as the penned-in area where the sheep slept every night. And when they go in there, the shepherd said proudly, they are perfectly safe in the pen. The scholar looked around and noticed something. Your sheep sleep in that pen, and yet I just noticed that the pen does not have a gate on it. That's right, said the shepherd. And the man said to him, well, how are they safe? How do they not get out? What happens here? Why is there not a gate? And the shepherd simply replied, I am the gate. What do you mean? The man asked in wonder. After my sheep are in the pen, I lay my body across the opening. No sheep will step over me, and no wolf can get in without getting past me first. I am the gate. This scholar wondered, and so do I, is this what Jesus had in mind when Jesus said, I am the gate. I am the way in and out of life abundant. I am the way in and out of safety, of security, of green pastures. Is this what Jesus meant? And so I, I want to leave us with a thought today, and that thought is simply that the shepherd who knows our name also is the shepherd who lays down his life for us. We don't have a gate of metal or steel or wood. We have a gate of flesh and blood, a gate that offers us, us life abundant, a gate that says to us, come in and rest and have your time with me. We meditate on that gate this week. And we meditate on the idea that as we come into that gate, we too will have life and have it in abundance. May we know that to be true this week. Amen. Amen. Simon just escaped. <laughs> we continue with our prayers. Holy Father, you are the Lord who does mighty wonders and have declared your power among the peoples. With you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Hear us this day, Lord of life, heal us and make us whole. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or suffering, that they may be made whole. Grant to all who are lonely, anxious, or depressed, a knowledge of your will, and an awareness of your presence. Grant to all who minister to those who are suffering in this uncertain time under mm. very unfamiliar restrictions, the ability mm. to convey and show wisdom, skill, sympathy, and patience. Mend broken relationships and restore to those in distress soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Sustain and support those who guide your, who seek your guidance and lift up all who are brought low by the trials of this life. Grant to the dying peace and comfort at the time of death and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Restore to wholeness what is broken in our lives, in our nation, and in our world. 
O Lord our God, accept the prayers of your people and look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O love of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dona nobis pacem pacem Dona nobis pacem Dona nobis pacem pacem Please join me as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Risen Christ, when we have the simple desire to welcome your love, little by little, a flame is kindled in the depth of our being. Fueled by the Holy Spirit, this flame of love may be quite faint at first. The amazing thing, Lord, is that it keeps on burning. And when we realize that you love us, the trust of faith becomes our own song. Amen. The kingdom of God is justice and peace and joy. Look to God, do not be afraid. 